Thank you for joining the Sabbath School today with the lesson focusing on husbands and wives together at the foot of the cross. Lesson number 10. One of the most precious fruits of believing the good news of Christ is the transformation that it performs in any human heart regarding love in marriage. Paul's idea of agape is tied to this idea of the love that led Christ to die our second death. Now it may be shocking to us to discover that conjugal sexual love is also agape. No, it's not lust. This is why Paul is so emphatic that there should be no jesting about sex. It's a serious, even holy subject, for it is procreation, and that is something that we share with God. When the husband understands what is the character of Christ, he will love his wife with a true love, something far deeper than what is sometimes called a chemical reaction between two people. Paul recognized that a happy marriage is a picture of what will be Christ's eventual union of heart with his people who form his church in these last days. Revelation 19, 7 and 8. What holds a marriage together through thick and thin is the faith that believes it was, no, it was God who brought the two of us together. We must not temper with his doing. When the realization of love, then the realization of love can return. It's the same as when we read that the Lord brought Eve to the man. Genesis 2.22 It's not superstition that speaks of a marriage as made in heaven. Every step that leads by, uh, to marriage is to be characterized by wholesome modesty so that Memories forever after may be happy and pure. It's the memory of God's leading, something more awe-inspiring than mere lust and sex. A superficial view of what Paul says, taken out of context, assumes that he is promoting a thoroughly selfish reason for a man to love his wife. He writes, he who loves his wife loves himself, but... Paul's constant emphasis of agape assures us that he is constrained by an unselfish love. He's reminding husbands that God has made the two of them one. Being true to the one whom the Lord brought to him as, as the sure path to his lifelong happiness and in his happiness hers is intimately involved in this and the children too. Paul counsels married couples, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Ephesians 5.33 Why doesn't Paul say that the wife should love her husband with the same agape? Adam was lonely in paradise. He wanted to search for some kind of Eve but she did try to woo him. Love is the initiative of the man. Woman is won by his love for her. Very seldom, if ever, do we read in the New Testament that it is our love for Jesus that initiates our salvation. Rather, it's his love for us. Faith is clearly revealed as our heart appreciation of Christ's love for us. Their faith is taught in the Bible as our healthy response to his love for us. A woman's devotion is the response to what she perceives is the man's love for her. If her husband proves himself a man who commands respect, she will respect him. If he is a worthy man, at times she may even regard him with a mysterious awe. Her heart will be forever happy in this love, in his love. O oh, Father in heaven, we thank you that your love has taken the initiative for our salvation, and it is that love that is to be implanted in the hearts of couples who are married together in Jesus. In his name we pray, amen.